Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. What's up, everybody? We are presently under a storm warning here yeah. in North Texas. We're supposed to get golf-sized hail yeah. that can injure people and animals and property. Yeah. So if things start getting set off, you know that's yeah. why. Yeah, popping off. Might get loud out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's going to be a wild night. Mm -hmm. We are here, however, to discuss Vanderpump Rules, season 11 episode, I don't remember. <laughs> and finally, Beatrice, I feel like we're starting to go somewhere. Yeah. Like we're starting to get some actual drama. It's not just about Sheena and her nanny and her tears. We're getting into some arguments. Yes. And it's starting to pay off. I know. I'm actually kind of enjoying it. Yeah, me too. I mean, I've been enjoying the show this whole season, but now it's starting to pop off and I'm like, yes. Yeah. Let's fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> well, and we also have been having some conversations, guys, about the Valley. Yeah. Because the Valley is VPR adjacent. Okay. We've got some OG cast members from Vanderpump who were fired for like racism and mm -hmm. scandal. Mm -hmm. And I guess Bravo doesn't give a shit, though. They're bringing him back to have their own show. So we're going to have Jax, oh. his wife, Brittany. And Kristen, who used to be very close with Katie, and oh. also Stassi, who you do not know. And then like a cavalcade of other characters that I am unfamiliar with. But that show starts next Tuesday, either before or after VPR. And we were thinking we should cover it because this season, Jax and Brittany look like they're getting a divorce. Oh, And we heard the rumors in this episode of VPR, Katie said... Mm -hmm. The streets is talking. Yeah, because Jax, Jax is, is a hoe. Yeah. yeah. So I think we're going to cover that. All right. I'm down I for it. I think it sounds really fun. So Thursday night slash Friday, if you're a normie, it's going to be Bravo. Yeah. And then Tuesdays, we're going to be doing TLC yeah. stuff. And I'm looking forward to it. Me too, bitch. A new season of Trash Honey. Yes. It better be lit. Yes. it's. I think it's going to be lit. All right. I hope so. I trust you. Yeah. It's like the zeitgeist. What's the most trashiest <laughs> trash that we can consume? <laughs> and I'm getting a feeling. I'm getting a vibe. Vibe Jack. Vibe Jack. Now, before we get into this episode of VPR, we do want to remind you, please hide your wife and hide your girls. We are a politically incorrect podcast which means we say bad words we have controversial opinions and beatrice is objectively dumb <laughs> wow She's objectively dumb. rude no, you're, you're mean not. you're so smart you know i love <laughs> you so much no but so sometimes we're dumb and we, yeah we, this is a comedy podcast so yeah. if you're a sensitive person why are you, you might want to find yourself <laughs> another dumpster but if you're down and you like to party a little disco ball in the dumpster well welcome to this trashy dumpster yes and if you do like to party and if you are down with the trashy vibes that we throw down here, go follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. So much content, honey. So much. You don't even know. You don't even know. And if you are watching on YouTube, thank you for being here. Please don't forget. It's so important to like and comment and share and subscribe. Everything you do helps us in the algorithm and that helps us to grow. Yeah. So thank you in advance. Thank you. You know, I don't mean it when I say that about you, right? Yeah, you better not. Bitch. No, well, I mean, you're always calling me fat and you a know. boomer. <laughs> Okay, there's so many things you say about me. I, I'm abusive. Are, you are abusive. You are so abusive. You um, deserve but it. I don't mean it. I, I think know. you're so intelligent. Beans. I think we have a lot in common with me being the more intelligent. <laughs> but I'm bringing, I'm bringing you up. I'm helping you out. I'm setting you on the path to righteousness. I mean, 20. thank you for you're that. You're welcome. You're welcome. I think you have a galaxy brain. Thanks. I think you're very pretty. Oh, thanks. You have a lot of talent. Thanks. I'm going to say that for everybody. I love this girl. Oh, my God. She does. I really do okay without further ado let's get into vanderpump rules take it away all right bitch i want to apologize to everybody in advance for how bad my voice sounds i sound like i've been chain smoking for 20 it years sound bad at it all. sounds pretty bad it really to me sound bad in all. my head it sounds like i'm a deep What's man voice <laughs> it's not bad i got some laryngitis or something so all right y'all gotta deal with it oh anyway God. let's it's get into this i wouldn't have even known it if you hadn't said <laughs> oh whatever i would not have known it if you hadn't said it so my voice sounds naturally yeah, like sounds, i chain smoke fine. Like for 20 years it's a little warbly <laughs> like you're a little dove yeah, but it's oh fine God, honey dove oh my god <laughs> you're too nice anyway 
we begin this episode with everybody coming back home from Tahoe. Yeah. Uh, Sandfall comes home to his humble abode. Right. Where Ariana wants nothing to do with him. She's gone. No contact. Yep. I mean, rightfully so. And he's like talking to his assistant Anne about how great Tahoe was because everyone just, you know, welcomed him with open arms, even though they fought. There was resolution. And then he's like, I'm going to go journal about it. Bye. Okay. <laughs> so great. Let me ask you this. Are you getting the vibe that Anne is starting to turn or has already turned against Tom? Because she seems to like barely put up with him. Oh, yeah. Like she's annoyed by his presence because he's annoying. He's hella annoying. So, yeah, I do get that vibe. But she's like, well, he's paying me. So I have to kiss his ass well i was watching watch what happens live Mm -hmm. and we had ariana maddox there she looked beautiful as always and also john oliver who was surprisingly so funny like he was such a good guest but at some point ariana was asked about Anne. like what is the relationship like is it weird having his personal assistant there maybe asking you questions and ariana said i love Anne." oh and we have to keep watching because there's going to be some developments around Anne in this season. Oh, I think Anne's going to defect. I mean, good. Yeah. And she needs to because fuck Sandoval. I mean, I don't want to sit there and harp on him. I say this every episode. Yeah, we shouldn't be super mean or whatever, but don't be mean. I mean, fuck him. (laughs) Shit on him. He sucks. Drag him. (laughs) He just sucks. I just don't get the whole like having to suck his dick the whole time. Like, can I, be very inappropriate. Yeah. I mean, I, maybe we should uncensor this. I okay. don't know. All right. Uh, back from uncensored. Let's get back to the show. All right. So after everybody gets home and gets all settled, then we have Sheena going to Lisa Vanderpump's McMansion. <gasps> the audacity. Bitch. And she needs a conditioner for her hair. I know. I don't mean to be rude, but it's looking like straw. Stop. It's bad. With the highlights. Yes. Anyway, Too go on. Too much chemicals in there. But yeah, she goes over to... Lisa Vanderpumps, and of course, they got to talk about fucking Tahoe. And of course, Sheena's got to be like, yeah, I'm just really struggling with my friendship, losing my friendship with Sandoval. And I just like want to talk to Ariana about it, but she's being such a bitch. I can't believe it. I really can't either. Back to watch what happens live. Um, Somebody asks Ariana how she feels about what she's seeing of Sheena and Lala, but in particular, Sheena, like all the things that Sheena's saying. And she's like, yeah. I didn't know about all the things that she was saying behind my back. (gasps) I was only having these conversations with her. I thought we were cool. But yeah, it's really hurtful. Stop it. Yeah. So this is affecting their friendship. And if Ariana is as important to Sheena as Sheena says she is, well, then she's fucking it up. Oh, yeah. She's fucking this shit up. She's fucking it up hardcore, especially when she gets to the part with Lisa Vanderpump where she talks about dancing with the stars. And she's like, yeah, I had to hear about it from ariana's new boyfriend dan that she got the the offer and that's what i've wanted my whole life i've been dreaming about it my whole life i'm like okay cringe like so (laughs) cringy yeah so cringy her being like i was taking dance lessons all year because i was expecting to get it i'm like oh my god pathetic some people have a vacuum inside of their soul like there will never be enough love there'll never be enough attention there'll never be enough fame and sheena's one of those people and it's sad because she's coming at it from a place of desperation yeah and i think there's like some sort of a script inside of her around unworthiness and never being the cool girl that she keeps acting out on the stage of her life i don't mean to become a therapist here but like it's (laughs) it's it is cringy i have said secondhand embarrassment that you would say that on television like you knew you were coming into a conversation with lisa at villa rosa you knew there were cameras that you had the audacity to say that out loud where you know other people will hear it much less ariana that's wild it's super wild That's wild and then you want to frame it around you being upset about sandoval that's not the reason you're fucking jealous yeah because she also makes the comment like ariana's living her best life making millions which right Ariana claps back with later in the episode, but she's like saying all of this shit to Lisa Vanderpump. And of course, Lisa's like trying to be impartial. She's trying to be nice about it. And she's like trying to root for Sheena to be like, okay, tell Ariana how you feel then. Quit Mm -hmm. talking shit and quit saying this to everybody else. Why don't you tell 
Ariana and of course Sheena doesn't do it. Well, but my sense of that conversation from Lisa's side was Lisa was agreeing with her perception and she's like, well, stand up for yourself. Yeah. Get out there and talk to her. Tell her how you feel as if she's right to feel that way. Like if you're going to come to me on some bullshit about a relationship you have and if you're acting stupid, I'm going to tell you like, look, yeah, I don't see it the same way. And you might want to put this into context. These are really great things that are happening for your friend because she went through a really bad thing. So maybe don't focus on your jealousy and just see how you can be there for her. It's not going to be forever. It's going to be for a few more months and then things will go back to normal. Like I would be real with you. Yeah. I wouldn't feed into your delusion that you should go confront Ariana and be like, but I want (laughs) it dancing with the stars. I wanted it and you took it from me. No, she didn't. And there's footage out there of Ariana after Dancing with the Stars saying on camera, like, I think Sheena should be the next one to come from our show to Dancing with the Stars. I think she would make a great cast member. Wow. So she's backing her up. But then Sheena's still dragging her, Mm -hmm. throwing her under the bus. That's ridiculous. She's come a long way from my backup dancer. Okay. So Gross. what? So you're a dancer and a singer. Shut up. You're almost 40. I, for real. Could you stop? It's really cringy. It's really gross. And so why does Lisa play the field then? Like, why does she side with Sheena if she has this knowledge? Like, does she actually think Sheena's in the right or is she just playing a game with all of these people? You know what? I don't know what her motivation is. I think that she looks at all of these cast members as her children i think that's what she wants us to believe at least Uh, and so she's maybe trying to mediate between people but i really don't think she likes ariana out of everybody ariana and lala have pushed back with lisa the most you cannot paw at ariana she will call you out on your shit and there have been a few times on reunions and in the show where Ariana told Lisa to back off. Like, no, 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 no. We're not doing this. Uh So I don't know that Lisa actually likes Ariana. And maybe again, people are seeing the writing on the wall. Maybe Ariana's not going to stay much longer than a season or two. And so maybe this is why. I don't know. I don't know why you would feed Sheena's anxiety and delusion here. I mean, really, though, it's it's just really cringy. I thought this whole conversation was ridiculous. And for Sheena to be so jealous over Ariana and... I don't know. It just, you're framing it like you're just sad because you want Ariana to understand your feelings about Sandoval, but it's not that. It's just her being jealous because she's famous. Right. She's getting all of the attention because she says this in multiple episodes. Why can't it be about me? Right. Like she's just so jealous. It's so gross. I just wonder about Sheena in March 2024 as she's watching these episodes back, as she's reading on social media the majority opinion that she's acting like a fool yeah, and chasing the limelight and being a clout goblin. Like, what is she thinking now? Oh, she's imploding. Yeah. If she's freaking out on this season about how people are dogging on her for that photo with sandoval for that birthday picture Mm -hmm. she's totally oh absolutely everybody hates her it's like robin brown like i'm just gonna Mm -hmm. go silent because everybody hates me (laughs) cry me river yeah Yeah, i I just think that she's i i wonder if she strategically chose a side based on uh who would benefit her more monetarily like Uh. give her more screen time and if she really thought she picked the right side with tom sandoval and now she's seeing it like unfold on television and she's like, oh, fuck, maybe not. That's embarrassing. It is embarrassing <laughs> because you're chasing clout. Yeah, 100 percent. But maybe she'll come to near the end of the season, though, because we saw in the preview when she's like confronting Sandoval and being like, do I mean anything to you? And he's like, yeah, you yeah, mean but it's a lot. still about her. Yeah, true. it's really still about her. Yeah. Can't we have like a solid six months to a year for Ariana to get over this devastating loss in her family, in her life? Really? Without needing to send her on platform you, Sheena? Like, can't you just take is it not possible for you to just take a back seat and shut the fuck up a little bit no because they're all self-centered as fuck the answer is no (laughs) it's no it's so bad i hate it well then after the lisa vanderpump conversation then we have lala and ariana getting lattes and this is where this was great this was crazy like this is where lala was really showing herself and i was like Mm -hmm. i don't like you bitch right i don't like you at all right like they start having like an innocent conversation about Ariana's cocktail book and the photo shoot and blah, blah, blah. And then Lala just kind of gets right into it and is confronting Ariana with 
her stance of like, I don't want to be friends with anybody who's friends with Tom Sandoval. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, what about Sheena? Lala's like, well, no, she talks about the social media post. It's the picture. Yeah. Yes. So right. she is telling Ariana about the social media post and being like, why didn't you come to defend her? Right. Which I'm like, that's stupid. Well, I, I can see a world where that conversation would happen between two friends. But the thing is, I don't think they're actual friends. No. Yeah. I think Ariana is filming a scene with Lala. And I think Ariana has received a lot of PR training and she knows how to show up on camera. And so Lala starts escalating and popping off about, well, why wouldn't you defend Sheena, though? Why wouldn't you just make a post? Like, don't you think she deserves it? It's too hard. And Ariana is just very quiet. And she's like, well, I didn't want to chase headlines. I didn't want to make it worse. Didn't seem like a big deal. I normally just ignore shit. And Lala ends up looking like a fool yeah. for pressing the issue. But the issue is, I mean, I, I can see her point, but I just don't know if it's an authentic point. Yeah. I think she's just trying to embarrass Ariana. Yeah. And she's trying to make Ariana into the villain. Like, oh, you're a terrible friend because you won't back up sheena but to me i'm like it's fucking social media like who the fuck cares like i hate when people sheena cares i mean yeah and all of these people are vapid as fuck and they care about their image online and everything so i get it from that perspective but i'm just like social media is so fucking stupid i hate when people tell me to go post something or to go comment on their thing because they want clout or they want right. likes i'm like no mm. i'm gonna do what i want to fucking do so i was kind of siding with ariana but then you know, as they're talking about it, Ariana starts to see Lala's point with it. And she's like, okay, well, I guess I'll say something if it matters so much. And right. So she ends up saying something. And then Lala kind of gets into the whole Sandoval thing. And she's just like, well, why can't you just, you know, accept that some people want to be friends with Sandoval? And Ariana's like, no, I've been clear about it. No, Ariana doesn't even say that. She's like, I am okay with that. You guys can go and hang out with him and do all the things I just don't want to be associated with people who do that. Mm -hmm. And that is what a boundary is, Beatrice. And yep. we talk about this a lot because a lot of people think a boundary is my belief and my opinion imposed upon somebody else so that they act different. That's not what a boundary is. A boundary is, okay, you're going to do what you want to do and I'm going to act different because of that. Exactly. So Ariana is well within her rights to feel that way. And once again, we have to say, in the last two seasons, we had Lala telling this entire friend group, the same friend group, that if they associated with her ex in any way, they were dead to her. Mm. And now here she is telling Ariana, like, what are you doing? Like, that's so ridiculous. But it's not ridiculous. And no. you're a hypocrite, Lala. 100%. And I was getting so frustrated with her during this whole conversation, like, why are you trying to push Ariana to break her boundary? Like, why are you pushing her to change how she wants to feel? Like, Lala keeps bringing up Sheena. It's like, well, but Sheena lost a friend. Okay. Mm -hmm. So? He sucks. I mean, he sucks. It's probably for the Ass. best. It's how I actually feel about that. Yes. And Ariana's like, okay, I lost a friend. I actually lost two because I lost Rachel too. And I lost uh, not a husband, but I lost a long-term partner. Exactly. I'm losing my fucking house. I'm in the process of losing all of this, Lala. And you want to lecture me. Now, in the after show, Katie and Ariana were together. And Katie's like, oh, and I'm paraphrasing. Like, Sheena wants to complain <laughs> about all the hate she got from this one picture that a fan asked to get. But like, this is the consequence of your actions. Because if somebody asked me to be in a photograph with Tom Sandoval, I'd be like, ew, I, I would maybe do it, but I wouldn't be like looking so chummy. Right. And so if you want to be a buffoon, which is what Katie says, if you want to <laughs> be a buffoon, this is what happens. But you don't then get to blame other people and make them do something because you are a buffoon. Katie is so over sheena mm. and i love it and Me we're gonna too. obviously get to the astrology party where katie is the one she's the one who will go up against lala and lala's got nothing but bluster and loudness but she doesn't have a point honey no she, doesn't. she does not have a point not at all yeah it's so good it's so good queen katie i love it i loved katie this whole episode because mm -hmm. the next scene is when katie sheena lala and some rando girl do you know who that was yeah christina oh yeah she's been she's been showcased oh. over the seasons i was like who are you <laughs> yeah she's just a mousy friend of katie and formerly stassi oh she was kind of a mean girl oh. but she just had a baby we're all getting older yeah so grace for everybody oh okay well i was like some rando that's literally what i wrote on my notes right. Christina. <laughs> like, i don't know who Christina Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> but they all go to like lunch or whatever and this is where sheena starts telling 
Christina, aka Rando Girl, about Tahoe and Sandoval. And Christina's like asking her all these questions about it. And like, how do you feel? And do you think Sandoval like really misses your friendship? And and Sheena's like, yeah, I genuinely do. I think he was like genuinely being like genuinely authentic with his tears and everything. What's more, she says, I think Tom is more upset about his loss of a friendship with me than his ruined relationship with Ariana. Yeah, because him and Ariana had such problems. How are you that much of a narc? Like, Bitch. I don't are, are I guess narcs are not socially conscious and aware. Like, can you be a narc but also be able to manage yourself and the things you say in front of other people so that they don't know you're a narc because I mean the way that she just says that aloud with her words, I'm like, Sheena, do you not hear yourself? You are an unconscious narc. Mm -hmm. you're, you're a narc who does not know how to self-moderate. Yeah. And it's embarrassing. The cringe that I'm feeling down to my vagina, it's a craggle. <laughs> I know. I'm craggling for you, Sheena. I know. How are you almost 40 and you don't get it? I know. It doesn't make any fucking sense. And she's saying all this in front of Katie when she knows Katie and Ariana are like hardcore standing together because they both left their toms you know so i'm just like what the fuck sheena and this is where katie mm -hmm. starts getting fucking annoyed with her and she's like well no she starts crying yeah katie yes katie gets oh. emotional about tom sandoval yes and how tom has treated her and called her a monster and inter fucking feared with her marriage and yes. so yeah she doesn't give a shit about that guy yes that's when she was telling sheena like how the fuck can you have compassion for him he's like a literal demon he doesn't give a shit about you he doesn't give a shit about anybody yeah and i thought that was really interesting that moment of mm -hmm. vulnerable vulnerability she had when she was talking about her marriage like how tom sandoval essentially made schwartz go against honey Katie. you would is have that to true? watch the previous seasons there is like this iconic scene from i don't remember which which season it was but <laughs> they're they're all dressed up for halloween or something i think they're in florida for some vacation and tom is turning to the camera and to everybody in the room while schwartz is in the bathroom sitting on the toilet and he's like don't you see he's a battered wife like he was always always turning tom against katie Whoa. and truly making katie out to be this monster now i i'm not going to negate that there were many times that katie acted hatefully and she was a mean girl she treated other people very very badly mm -hmm. but the lengths that tom went to to interfere with their marriage it's real and so i, I saw that on her face she's like i think what she was saying is like he ruined my fucking marriage. He took my husband away. Oh my gosh. And she starts to cry. Yeah. This is a real loss for her. And he's so, uh, Tom Sandoval is so unconscious to what he's actually done. He does not care about her at all. In the after show, I'm sorry I'm going off. That's fine. But in the after show, we have Jax, Tom Schwartz, and Tom Sandoval sitting together. Because remember, Katie's like, yeah, I heard that rumor about Jax. The streets are saying, you know, he's cheating on her. But mm -hmm. they're always saying that. And this is when Jack says, well, Katie just is a liar. And Katie is always trying to make something out of nothing. Katie is always trying to cause dissension. And Jax goes in on Katie. And that's because Katie has done that to some degree a little bit mm -hmm. in the past. But yeah, I think there's a lot... There's a lot of acrimony between some of these castmates that go way back. Damn. Way That's back. That's so fucked up. Yeah. So her crying, I felt that. I did too. And when she was saying this to Sheena, like I, I thought she was coming from like a genuine place. Like she was frustrated, of course, because she's like, how can you fucking have sympathy for such a piece of shit of a human being? And like, mm -hmm. how can you even try to see the good in him? And it's all because, like we said last episode, Sheena's, you know, holding on to the monetary gifts that sandoval gave her during covid when she was struggling and whatever i get it they've had 12 years of friendship whatever but i'm like seriously though i was feeling for katie and i was feeling mm -hmm. katie's vibe like i was watching it with your daughter and she's she hasn't watched this season at all and she's just like why is katie being such a bitch and i'm like well she's being mad because mm -hmm. sheena's trying to like suck sandoval's dick and trying to 
get compassion for him mm-hmm. and try to be his friend and it doesn't make any fucking sense like right. none of this Especially makes any sense when sheena calls herself ariana's bff like right. she is my closest friend we've been friends for years then why are you acting like this because she's fake for tom sandoval yes she's clout chasing yeah. yep she's fake af Ooh, it's an embarrassing season for sheena it's very embarrassing then we have sandoval meeting lisa vanderpump at tom tom and this was kind of like a weird conversation. It centered around Rachel. So that was why it was interesting. Um, he's talking about how he misses Rachel, how he's sad because she's ghosted him and blocked him. And he's like, I wanted a relationship with her. I'm like, no, you didn't. Right. You didn't care at all. You just wanted solidarity. You're just saying that for the cameras yep. in case she comes back. Yep. 100%. And then Lisa Vanderpump, I thought this was funny. She's like, well, I wasn't going to tell you, but I've spoke to Rachel at length. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's like, she hates you. Right. <laughs> Essentially, she's she said something that I thought was really interesting. She said to Tom Sandoval, you told Rachel that life is lying and that you made her lie and she was uncomfortable with that. And I was like, that's a crazy thing to say. Life is lying. Mm-hmm. I could totally see Sandoval saying Me something too. like that. And he says, I never said that. Mm, okay. I don't believe him. Mm-mm. He said that. Yeah. You said that 100%. And you are lying right now. Right. <laughs> You're right. lying all day, every day. Mm-hmm. And then um, Lisa Vanderpump and her talking head says that Rachel doesn't miss him. She doesn't love him anymore. She said that she was manipulated by him. And I believe that too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think she's a young girl. Like, I know I've been kind of hard on her. She's older than you. Like, let's keep it in perspective. Well, she's like 29. No, well, when this happened, she was, I think, 28. She was older than you. Yeah. So, I mean... Not by much. (laughs) Not by much. But, like, I don't ever see you making the choices that Rachel made. No. Like, I think you have a really good head on your shoulders. You also have a really great moral compass. And so I say that to say we can't just strip all of the responsibility off of her and put it onto Tom Sandoval. But maybe she was under some kind of dignosis. Yeah. And she was under some kind of an illusion with Tom Sandoval. But I mean... Ariana was one of your very best friends. For sure. You knew what the fuck you were doing. Yeah, she did. Right. So let's not just blame Tom Sandoval for the shit that you did, but I can understand why she would not want to be with him. Yeah, and I can understand the manipulation factor and like especially knowing, well, we don't know. We haven't seen the tape or anything. We've been seeing the lawsuits coming out now in the year Mm -hmm. of our Lord 2024 Mm -hmm. about the alleged sex tape that he filmed without her consent. So it's like I can see a world where like, she was being really stupid. She made a really bad, wrong choice of fucking over her friend, but she was manipulated by this asshole who was right just horny and wanted to fuck her. Yeah, but she was complicit. 100%. And then we have Lisa Vanderpump meeting Lala at her studio. Yeah, give them Lala. She had um, a brand. She was, I think, making clothing. I know she had a podcast. I think her ex, Randall Emmett, was very involved in that podcast. Mm. And so now she's trying to get rid of Randall. So I, th- I don't think she can use Lala. I don't think she can use certain terms. She's trying to do something new. But all I could think in this scene was how unspeakable Speakably pretty she is. I know. I mean, with no Sinfully makeup. pretty. I mean, she probably has, I'm sure, concealer and all this stuff on. But like, she is so freaking pretty. And in her interstitials, in her talking heads, I'm like, she is so pretty. I know. She is gorgeous. I mean, amazingly gorgeous. Like, it's insane. Yeah. Like, a fucking siren. Like, she's so pretty. I hate her for it. <laughs> I'm just I like, it's my great. God, I you're mean, so beautiful. I mean, from my vantage point as an older person, I'm like, I hope you know how much power you have in this world. Like, I hope you like maximize, optimize your beauty, your position, like this time of your life, like the men. I hope you do it all, girl, and Please. have so much fun because you are a baddie. I mean, she's so fucking pretty. So fucking pretty. But she is too full of herself as we will come to see in the scene with katie but do go on 100 percent. the only other thing that was interesting about this scene with lisa vanderpump is lala talks about her wanting a sperm donor and how she's already gonna do it nobody can talk her out of it i mean she's pregnant right now isn't she she's pregnant in the after show she said that she took her iud out last year like november october maybe and then she did one round of sperm insemination, which is, I hope, what you were going to do so I can have a grandchild. <laughs> I just had to throw that in there. And it took the first time because she's a fertile myrtle, fertile myrtle. like I believe you are as I well. Am, yeah. 
And I think in April, so now she's like four or five months along. Wow. And she showed her baby bump on the Instagram. And I understand and totally appreciate her position. She's like, I don't want a baby daddy. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have to split my time with my child 50-50 and not have her on a Christmas or on a Thanksgiving. Like, I want my baby to be mine. I'm like, go off. I mean, pop off, queen. Yes. I think that's great. If you have the money to support a family, to support children, and you want to love them, I love that for you. I know. And she was talking about how she just loves being a mom and she wants to have all the babies. Like, she wants to get inseminated what she ends up doing and then she wants to adopt kids and then maybe if she meets a man she wants Mm -hmm. to have his babies and i'm like i love yes Yes. i love that so much i think that's great some people are giving her shit online about that they're Mm -hmm. like she doesn't need to have kids i'm like oh shut up yes please do shut up she actually loves her kids so i mean it's fun and she has agency over her body and her reproductive rights and she can do what the fuck she wants to do yeah thank you thank you and then we have some weird scene with schwartz joe Kareem. James, Ali, like were, some weird manufactured dinner out. Yeah, that Ali doesn't want to be there because no. she thinks all of these people are old ass clowns. <laughs> she goes there with James, and Schwartz shows up in his aw shucks routine. I'm like, you're boring. And then Tom Sandoval comes, and crashes and the party. Shades. What a loser. These. Chloe woman's shades, which is fine. I don't care. That's really not my point. But like he's got these expensive shades and James in the after party says something like he probably purchased them that day, knew we were going to film, showed up, saw me looking at them and gave them to me, like acknowledging that Tom Sandoval has been out here giving gifts for allyship. Good. Well, I'm yeah. glad that he acknowledges that. He knows that. Lala knows that. Sheena knows that. They all know that. Yeah. Well, and Allie said it in her talking head. She's like, I feel like Sandoval is trying to buy everybody's friendship, yeah. especially James. Smart cookie right there. That's why I like her a lot. I she think she's so cool. She is not overcome by the, the stardom of Tom Sandoval. No. She couldn't give a shit. Mm-mm. I love that. I love it too. And I think she's good for James. Like from what I've seen, I'm like, I think she's mm. probably a good influence. I mean, he's a terrible person. Yeah, but maybe he can change. People can change. From DV? Well, I mean, that's alleged. It is alleged. It's all alleged. It is all alleged. Maybe. Maybe. I'm just going to stop talking. (laughs) (laughs) And then we have a weird scene with Schwartz and Joe going out to lunch. Okay. And so, and the whole reason why this is there is because people have insinuated that they've been fucking this whole time, that they're friends with benefits. Yeah. And all this stuff. And they confirm it on the show because the producers ask Schwartz and Joe separately, when was the last time you fucked? Schwartz is like, oh, I don't remember. Oh, all shucks. And Joe's like, oh yeah, we fucked last month. Yeah. Ew. It's a really odd pairing. She's a really odd person. It's pity fucking. She is, by the way, a hairstylist. Okay. And I'm like, when she's showing up in her talking heads with her hair and her... I'm so... I'm like, okay. um, I want to help you. I realize that you're not used to this world, but woo, somebody should have helped her from hair and makeup, honey. I mean, it's pretty bad. And she kind of... I don't mean this in a mean way, but I'm like, she kind of has a weird behavior. I'm like, is she on drugs? Yeah, there's something a little weird about her. Mm -hmm. And they're very odd together, keeping in mind, of course, that Tom Schwartz is uh, 41. Ew. And like, it's just the conversation is very juvenile. Yeah. And their energy is very quirky and weird. And I'm like, are we soft launching a romance? Because Schwartz, oh, how the mighty have fallen. I think it's cringe as fuck. And like, I guess there was some talk or something. I think Allie was the one that said it, that joe like moved in with schwartz like right after his divorce yeah. and i'm like okay that's fucking weird and chasing then chasing that broken d ew <laughs> it's like they're like pity fucking each other i think Whoa. i think that's what it is that's just it gives me the vibe like he's not into it she's probably like so over the top and she's probably like actually in love with him but like won't admit it because he keeps saying we're just bros we're just yeah. friends friends with benefits Ugh. i did see something on the subreddits about tom schwartz having a new girlfriend who is in her 20s and very pretty, just a gorgeous young girl, Clout Goblin, no doubt. And so he's he's dating someone super young. So he's not dating Joe officially. Okay. It's just weird. Like, what's happening? I don't know. And so fast forward. I hate it. I think it's really cringy. I don't need her on my television. No. She has no part in this universe. She needs to get on out. (laughs) She makes me uncomfortable. She does. I'm uncomfy. (laughs) I hate it. Uncomfy. Oh, 
And then we get to the final part of the episode where all the guys go out to a nice fancy steakhouse and then all of the girls go to Allie and James's house for that astrology thing. Yeah. That like weird astrology meeting. Well, I mean, as a as an amateur and yet very adept astrologer, I mean, did you find her astrology readings to be accurate? Mm, they were bad. I mean, she were was they? she was like general? trying yeah or, okay and maybe it was just edited that way like i don't know because yeah. none of the other girls gave a shit at all like they didn't care at all right nobody they're cared. just showing up because the producers told them to exactly under the guise of an astrology party yeah and i kind of felt bad for Allie because she like printed out everybody's birth charts and like nobody cared you would have been geeking so, so hard you'd be like oh my god the planets and the lines <laughs> and the houses well and i was oh like genuinely god. curious i was like super excited i would have liked more information yes what did we learn well, we learned fucking Ariana's got some Jupiter in the first house. Like nobody cares. That's not, it's irrelevant. Okay. Then we have um, Lala being a Scorpio rising, which tracks. Yeah. And that she's got Pluto in the first house, which is actually interesting. What does that mean? Well, I mean, Pluto's like the planet of like chaos, like destruction, like change, but it's like rebirth, you know, it's all of that yeah. in one. Like and like lava, like yeah. molten lava. Exactly. And like for it to be in the first house, that means like she's got very Plutonian energy. Like she's mm. very intense, very intimidating, very strong headed. And I mean, hello. Yeah. That's what she is. Very much so. And she probably scares people because she's so intense. I mean, she's so fucking direct and she's always calling people out and screaming at them. I'm you like, know who she doesn't scare? What? Katie. Aries moon. Bitch. Katie. Katie's I've got like, an Aries moon too. I've been waiting for this conversation, Lala. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. That was an interesting clash of the titans. Let's just get into it okay. because that's like the crux of the whole meetup. Yeah. Fucking Lala just goes off in like already and like she, the energy was weird i know like if we're just having like some charcuterie charcuterie we're having some wine yeah we're talking astrology like why are you coming in so hard right lady? and fucking sheena is just sitting there all quiet right not saying anything the one with the actual problem well and it's so stupid because in her talking head she's like I wanted to have a conversation with Ariana. I'm like, really? Because we didn't see that. Yeah. You had Lala doing your dirty work for mm -hmm. you because you can't fucking speak with your big girl mouth. Right. It's really cringy as fuck. And like Lala, I could see where she was like trying to come from the place of like defending her friend. But it, all it does is it comes off fucking unhinged, mm -hmm. comes off crazy because you have no like valid reasoning to just be going off on Katie and Ariana for ariana having boundaries about sandoval like i don't know i just thought this whole thing was a huge fucking mess yeah and it really demonstrates how much tone matters mm -hmm. like it's not that she didn't say valid things although i would argue that they were invalid yeah. but it's not like she didn't have an argument that she could articulate it was the energy in which she framed that argument like what is ariana supposed to do with that how is it helpful the energy is saying you're attacking ariana yeah even though your words don't necessarily say that although they kind of do like the energy is fucking harsh yeah calm down yeah and all of it was in the context of james i think it was because like Sheena got a text from Brock or something from the steakhouse and Brock had said something about like James was being nice to Sandoval or whatever. And then Allie and Ariana were talking about it and Ariana's like, I don't understand why he can be mm -hmm. sympathetic to Sandoval when like just two minutes ago he was upset still mm -hmm. of him fucking Rachel even though they had broken up. So like, right. what the hell is going on? And then that was when Lala just immediately goes into all of it and she's just like, well, you know, time heals things. So maybe he's fine with it. And or Ariana, get over it. Yeah. It's literally, it's like, I think July or August of 2023. It's been, I don't know, maybe five months. Right. And she's just on her campaign of Ariana, get the fuck over it. And she even has the audacity to say, my shit was shittier than your shit. I know. I'm like, that is so fucked up to say. Like, you guys both went through some hard shit and I get it. And like, Lala's like holier than thou attitude of her being like, well, you know, I just know firsthand that resenting your ex is like drinking the poison. And so I just really want Ariana to not resent Sandoval anymore. Really? Because that's <laughs> okay. not how it's coming off. Yeah. It's coming off as judgmental and asking her to hurry up and heal already. Right. That's not how healing works. Like it's, I don't know, two or three years out of your own healing process and you're obviously still fucking unhinged. Exactly. Are you healed? No. Not at all. 
And then she's sitting there calling Ariana out and being like, well, this is just proof that you wouldn't want to be friends with somebody who's friends with Tom Sandoval. And she's like, I don't care if people are friends with him. I just don't want to fuck with you Mm -hmm. if you're going to dinners with him on random nights. Like, I'm just not going to do that. And that's fucking fair. Right. Exactly. And to remind everybody, two seasons ago... It was Lala saying, you're dead to me if you hang out with fucking Randall. So I just don't, how, where's the disconnect in her intellect and in her emotional intelligence that allows her to lambast somebody for the choice that she already made herself? Right. Like what's going on with you, Lala? Is there a problem? Do we have a problem here that you don't comprehend this? I know. Give Ariana a little bit of grace. Really? It doesn't, it doesn't make any fucking sense. And like, I don't know if there's shit that we're not seeing like behind the scenes because of the editing or whatever. Mm, It feels like Lala trying too hard that's what i'm thinking too Mm -hmm. and it just feels like they're trying to push forward this like narrative that ariana is like this bitch this Mm -hmm. horrible person for having boundaries and not wanting to fuck with people who fuck with tom sandoval and like i think it was ariana saying it in this scene or in her talking head i forget where she's like i don't want to fuck with people who fuck with him because he's going to try and ice me out of the group Mm -hmm. and we see that in the preview yeah when he's already screaming at everybody at some weird party and being like ariana talk shit about all of you Mm -hmm. So he's already trying it. She's pegging him for what he is. He's a piece of shit. Right. Okay, a couple of things. I want to break down how the argument happened with Katie because I'm not remembering what started it. But I also want to make sure that we get to Ariana's finances. Was that at this party? Yes, it was at this party. And I think she brought it up first before the argument because I think somebody had asked her like how she's been doing. Maybe it was Sheena. Sheena asked Ariana, like how she's been doing for all of this. And she's like, well, I've been having a hard time financially. Like Mm -hmm. people act like I've been making millions off of this shit and I haven't been. It's been like several months of lawyer fees and dealing with all the bills and having to separate everything and all of this shit. Like, and I think she said like two months ago, Mm -hmm. she was down to her last $2,000. Right. Wild. I'm like, oh my God, that's terrible with all of this shit. And she, she was holding her own and trying to come off like she was doing better than what she was doing. But I like that she said that because I wonder if somehow it got through the grapevine that Sheena was the one mm-hmm. that said to Lisa Vanderpump, oh, she's making millions. She's living her best right. life. Right. Because then Ariana says that in this conversation. Yes. And she's saying it to Lala. Like she's not saying it directly mm-hmm. to Sheena. And Sheena's just shutting the fuck up. Right. And then this is where James gets brought up because Sheena gets a text from Brock. And then Lala just gets super set off. She's coming in hard. Yeah. And she, Katie like wants to come in and return the energy because like what are you fucking doing like we're really here just to learn about our fucking rising sign and our moons like why are you coming in with so much energy for real so katie's trying to meet that energy and say like calm the fuck down and that's what pops lala off yes because i think katie like kind of scoffs or whatever and she's like yeah she's like ooh, so scary like lala you're so scary your threat and lala immediately pops mm-hmm. off she's like don't fucking act like that and then they start yelling at each other and then she starts waving her finger in katie's mm-hmm. face and like katie's like no 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 no. what we're not gonna do is have you raising waving your finger in my face and they were arguing and katie was giving as good as she got i think she she was uh i think lala was a little not disarmed but she was a little shook yeah she's like okay so somebody's got the fucking nerve and the ovaries to stand up to me. And so like, well, how am I going to navigate this? And I remember Lala saying something like, um, why are you making me do this? Why are you making yeah. me say this shit to you? And that really felt, it smacked, it was so reminiscent of abusers who say, now mm. why did you make me hit you? Why'd you go and do that so I had to hit you? Right. Like blaming somebody else for bringing out this fucking monster in you. How about Lala, you just learn how to fucking act. Right. Learn how to shut your mouth, allow a conversation to happen, learn how to not escalate with your tone and your words. Not everything needs to be a fight. Right. Why are you scrapping all the time? Why do you gotta be so fucking defensive? And then blame other people for being fucking defensive. It's so ridiculous to me. And I loved Katie this whole entire scene. Her just popping off, Mm -hmm. totally defending Ariana and being like, Ariana's been saying this the whole entire time. Mm -hmm. Like, you need to chill the fuck out. There's no mystery. No. Like, why are you acting like this is such a big deal? Mm -hmm. And then again, 
Lala coming in with the holier than thou attitude being like, well, but you know, I'm not resentful anymore. So Ariana, you should not be right. Shut up. It's not the same situation. And people process things differently. And also, and finally, who do you fucking think you are dictating to other people how to feel and how to process? That's always been the problem of Lala. Like if it, seems right to her then it should be right for everybody i hate that yeah, that's not how the world works Lala. no she's obnoxious and the thing about her is that sometimes she's so right yeah sometimes she's really on the right side of history and if she could just fucking fine-tune herself and and know how to have conversations and talk to people and stand on the right fucking points like she'd be so much better but she just she's ne- she's not learning I think it's so frustrating. It's super fucking frustrating. I think she's one of the ones that has Virgo somewhere in her chart or whatever. Yes, Moon, I think. And so that to me, I'm like, she's just hypercritical of everybody. And like, she's hypercritical of herself for sure. And that's why she's projecting it onto everybody else. Like the need to try and tell people how to act and how to be and try to control the whole situation. Like such a Virgo yeah. fucking thing to do. And like, I know this cause I'm a Virgo rising. <laughs> like I, I can be like, kind of like that where I'm trying to like control people or trying to tell them how to act, but sure. you have to fucking check yourself yeah. and you have to listen to other people who are trying to check you too right. and be like, chill the fuck out bitch right. and and not escalate from there right like learn how to take that criticism and, and adjust yes like, okay i'm coming in hot i yeah. need to just calm down a little bit yeah she's emotionally unregulated 100 she doesn't know how to um, moderate how she speaks how she feels what she does and that's Mm-mm. unfortunate i hope she gets it together because she's like a really beautiful person and yeah. i think she means well yeah i really think she's coming into this conversation hot to defend sheena i feel like she's thinks she's doing the right thing but like with what ariana's giving her which is just maturity and level-headedness like it just seems really wrong yep <laughs> it's not making any sense to me at all yep and yeah. is art is a uh, lala younger yes okay like yeah, in I her think, 30s i think yeah i think lala is maybe 30 31 okay ariana's heading towards 40 38 39 kind same of thing, thing with katie is she like Katie's in, in the middle? She's oh, thirty five okay. or so. Sheena's like thirty eight, I think. Okay, yeah. that makes more sense. Then she's kind of coming from like a yeah. very immature. But then there's place. Allie, who's twenty four, right. and she's the most mature out of everybody. I know, and I always forget that she's that young. Just remember, everybody, we're all different. <laughs> we're all here to express ourselves in a different way. Can't we all just get along? <laughs> That's Allie. <laughs> Poor Allie. <laughs> I had made a charcuterie board. <laughs> she am. I still have Jesus. your birth charts that we could still get into. <laughs> Yikes. And they literally Ooh. don't care. No, it's they sad. they do not care, honey. Oh, God. And that's how the episode ends. Okay. With them fucking fighting. And then we have the preview. Yeah, remind me. I don't remember. Well, Sheena and Brock are talking about their relationship. And Sheena's like, I don't see us being together forever. Is that a producer fake out, do we think? Or is she coming to her senses like I really want her to? I mean, it sounds like she's going to leave his ass. And she knows it. Yeah. And he knows it. Yeah. Was he tearing up? He looked like he was good. Cry more. Cry more, Brock. (laughs) I feel like it was kind of fake, though, on his part, because he's probably like, okay, bye. (laughs) I'm over you and your crazy ass. Okay, bye. He's got no fucking money. He's got no job. He's got no thing. Nothing. He could find somebody else. Where's he? Okay. He can find another like Orange County girl. He can't find another Sheena. Well, Sheena is always hustling, honey. I guess. Bringing in the money. She's got her projects and her side hustles. And he cannot do better than her. Plus, she's pretty. I mean, I guess. Okay. With what side hustles? Her fucking music and stuff? No, her podcast. Oh, Sh- yeah. Shenanigans. I guess. Well, let me remind you, she made hundreds of thousands of dollars off the scandal. I mean, congrats. That's great. Okay. I'm sure he can probably just hitch on with the Why? Tom Sandoval crew. You think he's handsome? No, I'm just saying he Ugh. could probably ha- he could hitch on to the ride with all of the dudes, and he'll probably find another dumb girl. I don't think they like him. I don't know. I don't think they like him. Really? Yeah. You think they're just gonna be like bye, Brown? I feel like they can sniff his desperation. <laughs> I think he <laughs> so wants goblin. to be a part of this group, and he's just not. At no. least he will never be for me. No. I will never <laughs> let him in. I will never. Not. Fuck Brock. Yeah. And then James and Allie talk about having babies. And Allie's like, I don't want kids yet because I'm like 24. Right. And James doesn't seem like he's happy about that. But isn't he like 40? James? Yeah. No, I think he just turned 30. Oh. <laughs> like he literally, he's the same age what? as Lala. Yeah. No, oh. he's just turned 30. But it's a, it's the age where guys start to think about starting a family and doing shit like that. Oh, okay. Well, then maybe he'll be understanding of wanting Allie to wait. Well, 
maybe. Looks we'll like he's going to cry. Cry more. <laughs> cry more. I thought he was older. Um, and then Ariana is going to some group hangouts now where Sandoval's involved. I'm like, what? Like they're on a beach and Sandoval's there and they she's in his presence. They work together. They're co-workers. There are scenes. They get a fucking email and say, okay, at seven o'clock on Friday, we all meet at the beach. Okay. So but she's got to go. I mean, for seven episodes now, she's been like, I will never be near him. She I will doesn't never have the power anybody. that she thinks she has. I mm-hmm. think the production company is telling her, you got to go. Well, and you're going to have to show up to these various and sundry events and you're going to have to make it work. Biatch. And it's going to cause some drama already. Yeah. He's trying to talk to her. That's what they want. Yes. Which I mean, I want that too. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, um, I'm not talking to you. Yeah. I can't hear you. I don't Bye. see you. Where are you? I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they go to some big fancy party where everybody's in like black dresses and black suits and stuff. And it looks all rich and fancy and everybody's there and then there's drama between sandoval and ariana and that's where sandoval is yelling to everybody at the party that ariana talks shit about everyone and i'm like that's not gonna go over well at all that is so uncool can we just talk about that for a moment yes like if you're really tight friends with somebody and then your friendship implodes and you no longer hang out. And then all of a sudden they're spreading all of your dirt from all the gossip that you guys talked because you were friends. Yeah. And you talk mad shit like that is the most uncool, unloyal thing to do. Like I have fallen out with people through no fault of my own. <laughs> of course, you're through perfect. No fault of my own. <laughs> I've fallen out with people, but you will never. Ca- and I know some shit honey oh, i know yeah. where the bodies are buried honey and yeah. i've had marriages and i know those men too but you will never catch me telling their stories and outing them about anything same because like, when they told me that i promised them we had like a confidence and just because i'm no longer their friend or their lover like that doesn't go away right exactly and to spread it like that in such a public platform it just proves ariana's point this whole entire time being like i'm not i don't trust him i don't think he's a good person Mm -hmm. he's gonna try and ice me out right he's gonna try and talk shit and he's literally doing that yep on tv on air right now this reunion i feel like is gonna be crazy we'll see i'm hoping like i feel like they're gonna all fight Based on what Ariana was giving on Watch What Happens Live, again, I say I think she's had a lot of PR training. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she's going to go up on that reunion and act a fool because she's got so many brand deals and so many opportunities. And I think in terms of her appearance in Chicago on Broadway, I think Andy Cohen said they have been breaking records with her playing Roxy Hart in Chicago on Broadway. Like, I don't think she would jeopardize the shit she's got going on to act a fool on the reunion, but I will be, I'll be very interested to see. Mm, I kind of hope some shit goes down. I mean, sh- she would have every right to pop off. But yeah. I just don't know if she will. Maybe Katie will on her behalf. Oh, please. Because Katie seems like one of those down chicks that'll ride for her girl. Um, but yeah, Tom Sandoval is so transparent. I mean, giving those shades to James and showing up and pretending that he's a reformed and changed person i know but he is not not at all not even slightly oh and speaking of katie we finally get to see hopefully throughout the season katie and schwartz dating the same girl so is this schwartz's new girlfriend i don't know good no 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 it's not the person that i saw on instagram it's somebody else it's probably a producer plant just to drive forward a story but i'm here for I'm here it's for a love the gay art. And I am Team Katie. Me too. Hashtag bitch. Team Katie. Me too. I'm loving her this season. I don't give a fuck. I love her hair. Like, I know. I've seen her hair long. I've seen it shorter, but this is great. She looks so stylish and so beautiful. She looks fucking cool. Yeah. Yeah. She is. She's cool. That's yeah. exactly what it is. All right. Any final thoughts on Vander Pump Rules? Are you excited for the Valley as well? What do you yeah. Think? I mean, if the Valley is anything like this, and it's malicious, and people are talking shit, I'm totally for it. Have you seen any of the previews? No. Drama, 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 drama. I'm going to go watch drama. it when I walk, go home. Has, are there previous seasons? No, this is the first season. Oh. So what we will do next week as we cover the first episode is I'll give you the lowdown on Jax and Brittany because there's history there. Okay. And Kristen. And maybe we'll do their astrology. Yeah. Uh, I don't know who any of the other people are. And we'll go from there. Okay. Yes. I thought there was like previous seasons. No. So, oh my God, it's going to be new. Yes, a new show just for the record. Ooh. 
so excited about it. I'm into it, girl. All right. Is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you like this video on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, and then go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star yeah. review. It really helps us grow it the does. pod. So thank you so much. And until next week, where we will be back to talk Seeking Sister Wife, The Valley, and VPR. Never forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace.